I'll be talking about mixed network topologies. In the first MixNet paper published in 1981 by David Trum, he introduces us to the cascade topology. It looks like this. It's essentially a static route through the network that all clients share. And the great thing about this is that instead of using a single mix, uh, we're using multiple mixes and they should be operated by different entities. This forms multiple security domains within the system so that if, if we have at least one honest mix, we, we still have the security properties we're looking for. And so this is, this is why we don't want a single mix. And the other great thing about this is it's pretty easy to compute the anonymity set size or the Shannon entropy of each mix. Uh, there's a couple downsides. One is that it doesn't scale well with respect to the number of users using the system and the number of messages traversing the mix network. The, the other problem with it is that there, it's not very resilient. If one of these mixes has an outage, then the entire network is down. So thus enter free route. Now, I should tell you before I talk about free route that clients select their own route through the network. If clients were to delegate the authority of route selection to some other entity in the network, then that entity could uh, cause your routes to become distinguishable in that it, they could use a subset of all the possible mixes and then your route, all your routes are easily fingerprintable. So this scales really well in comparison to the cascade topology in that all the messages traversing the mixed network are load balanced across many mixed nodes. Uh, so, however, there's, there's uh, some problems with this. One is that it's intractable to compute the Shannon entropy for each mix. And the other problem is that uh, each mix is ha actually has slightly less entropy. So let's take a look at this. So when mix zero here is receiving a message from Alice, but it's also receiving a message from Bob, They've, they've selected different routes. They're using the same mixes, but in a different order. And so the problem here is that from mix zero's perspective, it's not actually mixing those two messages. If those two messages were to land on mix zero at the same time, they wouldn't really be mixed because the distinguishable characteristic between them is the, their source, where, where they came from. Alice's message is coming from outside the mix network and Bob's message is coming from inside the mix network or from mix one. So that would effectively split the anonymity set into two sets or two buckets. And it's the same for the rest of the messages as well. They're all to have uh, this problem. And so there's uh, an excellent paper about network topologies. And in this paper, they point out the layered topology, also sometimes referred to as the stratified topology. So in this topology, clients choose their own route and they can select a mix from each layer uh, to be in their route. And you can, you can add more layers, but in, in this simple example, I've got three layers. And this is, this is great because we still have this uh, load balancing property where we're load balancing all the messages across uh, many mixes in each layer. So it scales really well with respect to the number of users and the number of messages traversing the network. And it's also a great compromise between cascade topology and free route because it makes it tractable to compute the entropy for each mix. Amir Hertzberg has two excellent papers on mixed networks and he introduces a, a different topology. I like to call it the multi-cascade topology. So in this setup, clients learn about different cascades and they can choose one of them and they can choose to use one of them for some period of time, for some time duration. Now, if there's a, there's a problem with this stratified topology in the sense that if, uh, say for example, one mix is compromised in each layer. Now, the more messages you send, the more you increase the, your probability of eventually selecting a bad route. And a bad route is essentially a route where each hop in the route, each mix comprising that route is compromised. Uh, and this, this doesn't work if only one of them is compromised or if two of them are compromised. You have to ha have at least one honest mix in your route in order to uh, have the anonymity security properties we're looking for. So in, in Amir's case, it's a different trade-off. They, they both have these downsides. So the multi-cascade topology is great if you select a good cascade, then you should be good for the, for the duration of, of using that. So let's see, uh, the 
Lupix Anonymity System published in Usenix in 2017 uses the stratified topology. So here we have multiple layers that clients can choose to use mixes in each of these layers for their route. And it has a slightly different take on this layer topology because we've we've got this these providers at the edge of the network. And providers are essentially mixes. However, they have some extra features. So Alice sends a message to Bob's provider. So Bob uh, has to communicate his provider to Alice. She has to know where his provider is on the network so she can send it a message. And the problem with this is that if Alice turns evil or becomes compromised. Now the adversary knows Bob's provider and they can easily compromise Bob's provider and next time he connects, the uh, his location on the network can become known. So this, this is a good system for providing uh, sender and receiver anonymity with respect to third party observers. However, it does not provide strong location hiding properties where Bob and Alice want to mutually distrust each other. And this mutually distrust sounds really unfriendly, but it's really not because uh, like I said, uh, Bob or Alice's client could become compromised and this should not lead to compromising the other party. Um, the other thing I'd like to point out before we move on is that in, using the stratified topology, the, op, the, uh, the directory authority or the maintainers of the network could choose to put a, a, the untrusted operators of the network all in one layer. Uh, and in fact, each operator could operate one layer in the stratified topology uh, because we want all our routes to traverse multiple security domains. So it would be really bad if this was managed in such a way that a route through this network would choose mixes all operated by one entity because really we want multiple security domains in our in our routes to protect against uh, uh, the operators becoming compromised, getting national security letters and things like that. So, um, so we can fix this location hiding property. Uh, we can we can provide this location hiding property by using dead drops. So before Alice and Bob exchange messages, they can first agree on. Uh, on dead drops to receive messages from one another. So Bob tells his dead drop location, which is here, he tells it to Alice. So Alice sends a message there. And later Bob can retrieve it. But Bob never connects directly to his dead drop. He wants, he wants this indirection. He wants the route through the mix network providing this layer of indirection between himself and his dead drop. So that if his dead drop becomes compromised, it still can find out Bob's location. So this design has strong location hiding properties. But how does the message get back to Bob? Well, we're, we're using the Sphinx cryptographic packet format, and uh, I'll talk about that more in a later video, but in, uh, he bundles a serb in his uh, message request to his dead drop. And a serb is a single use reply block, and it allows for anonymous reply where his dead drop can reply to Bob with his message, but not discover his location. And so here's the uh, message being sent from the dead drop to Bob's secret provider, and then Bob retrieves his message. And so in, in this scenario where Alice is sending a message to some dead drop or some provider on the network for some service, we, we want to utilize loops. So a loop in this case is a type of decoy traffic such that if Alice's provider is compromised, that provider doesn't know when Alice is receiving a legitimate message or a decoy loop to, to her, that she sends to herself. So in this case, Alice selects uh, uh, one of these providers at random and there's a kind of echo service. So she, in her message, she bundles a, a serb, a single use reply block, and it allows the provider to send back a message to her. In this case, since it's a decoy message, the, the message isn't important, but it's indistinguishable uh, because of the, uh, how the Sphinx packet format. So this is actually the same scenario as Alice sending a message to Bob's dead drop. So she sends a message to Bob's dead drop and it actually should end up looking just like another loop. The loops are indistinguishable from any other traffic. In, in the cats and post mix network system, this is how it works. The Lupix paper, the loops are designed in a slightly different way. That's all for now. Thanks for listening. Let me know if you have any questions.